x squared plus y squared equals 25, and we want to find the second derivative. Now, just as a side note, x squared plus y squared equals 25, that's actually an equation that you should recognize. Uh, what type of function is that? Or what kind of graph does that give us? Does anyone know? x squared plus y squared equals 25. It gives us a special kind of graph. You looked at it in math. Do you do math three? No, I'm going to ask you to read your way back. Well, you can take the square root of all of them. Well, you have to it because of that plus. Circle? Circle? Do y'all remember equations of circles? X squared plus oh, Y squared yeah. equals R squared? Yeah, we are. Okay. So this is a circle with a radius of 5. Now that really has nothing to do with our differentiation. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, so x squared plus y squared equals 25. That is a circle with the center of the origin with a radius of 5. So has no bearing on the derivative, but never hurts to review stuff like that. So if we are trying to find our second derivative um, of this function, so... Uh, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y, y prime. The derivative of 25 is 0. Don't forget, I tried to warn you about that. A lot of people tend to forget, and they bring down the 25, and it's not right. Okay. Now, before um, we solve for y prime, I told you yesterday, I wanted you to get in the habit of this, noticing that if all of your coefficients have a common factor, you want to go ahead and divide by that. So we can divide all these numbers by 2. So we can simplify this to be x plus y, y prime is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to go ahead and solve for, um, are you not? Actually, no, I'm not. Never mind. Never mind. Just kidding. Well, yes, I am. I'm going to solve for y prime. Sorry, change my mind. Three times. I'm going to solve for y prime. Okay, so subtract x from both sides. Uh, y, y prime is equal to negative x. And then divide by y. So dy over dx is equal to negative xy. Now, I changed my notation there just because the problem started with um, the dy over dx notation, so this will just help me remember. I'm not finished, that's just the first derivative. I really want to find the second derivative. Now, we have a choice here. Um, I did solve for dy over dx here because we're going to end up having to substitute, um, but I really don't want to have to do the quotient rule. Okay, I really don't want to have to do the quotient rule to take this second derivative. So I'm going to go back to this green step right here, and I'm going to take the derivative again from the green step. Okay. Now, I did need to solve because you'll see here in a second uh, where I'm going to have to substitute, but I just want to avoid the, the product rule or the quotient rule if I, have, if I can. Okay. So the derivative of x is 1. Y, y prime requires the product rule. I'd rather do the product rule than the quotient rule. All right, so the derivative of, uh, wait, what do we do? We do the first times the derivative of the second. So the first term was y. The derivative of a derivative is the second derivative. Plus the derivative of the first, well, the derivative of y is y prime, times uh, the second. And the derivative of 0 is still 0. Now, this kind of looks a little weird. Well, kind of looks really weird. Yes, I did the product rule. Okay, I took, I'm, I'm going back to the green step because that was where I took the derivative. Okay, that is the first derivative. It's just not solved for dy over dx. Um, so, yes, I did the product rule with the y, y prime. Yes. Okay. Um, so, we need y double prime. We need this by itself. Okay, we need this by itself. So first of all, um, I'm going to substitute for these y primes because I know from the previous step that y prime 
is equal to negative x over y. So I'm going to substitute that. Okay, I'm going to keep all my other stuff for the moment. Okay, y prime is equal to negative x over y. Well, I'm multiplying it by itself, so a couple of ways of looking at it, but I'm just going to write that squared. Because it's y prime times y prime. Or you could write negative x over y times negative x over y. Kind of got a little bit of a choice there. Okay, so I'm trying to isolate the y double prime here. Okay, I'm trying to isolate the y double prime. That's the only one that I have, so that means everything else has to go to the other side. So that means that I'm going to subtract the 1. I'm going to do this in a couple of steps here just so that no one gets confused. I'm going to go ahead and square that. Negative x squared is positive x squared. y squared is y squared. And that's all equal to negative 1. And then I'm going to move that to the other side. Subtract x squared, y squared from both sides. So we get y times y prime is equal to negative 1 minus x squared over y squared. And then instead of dividing by y, since I already have a fraction on the other side, I'm going to look at this as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, It's the same thing as dividing. It's just going to make uh, the math on the right side a little bit easier to handle. Okay, 1 over y times y cancels. So we have y double prime, or I'm going to go ahead and write that as d squared y over dx squared, is equal to... Uh, negative 1 times 1 over y, that's negative 1 over y, minus x squared over y cubed. And a lot of times they will combine that so that we have a single uh, expression. So that means I need to multiply that first fraction by y squared so that I can get a common denominator of y cubed. So that means d squared y over dx squared is equal to, we've got um, negative y squared minus x squared over y cubed. Now, there's one last thing that we should always check for when we're doing implicit second, uh, second derivatives. When you get to the end, a lot of times you can go back to your very original function, which in this case was x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, and a lot of times you can substitute that back into your expression, and this is no exception to that. If I rewrite my numerator here, those are both negative. If I take out a negative and I get x squared plus y squared, then I can substitute for that x squared plus y squared. So my second implicit derivative is negative 25 over y cubed. Because x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So make that substitution back in there. That is the implicit second derivative. Now, here's the thing about differentiating implicitly twice. A lot of times there's several different directions that you can go in. Okay, um, What I mean by that is back up here, after I took the first derivative, and I solved for dy over dx, I chose to go back before I solved for dy over dx and uh, derive from that step, you could have derived negative x over y. You would have just had to use the quotient rule, um, and you would have still had to do your substitution. You may have gotten to the answer quicker. I don't know. I, I may have done it that way last year. I honestly can't remember. Um, but a lot of times, I don't know, I just, 
the quotient rule, we tend to make careless mistakes with the quotient rule. So I try and avoid that at, at all costs. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, on this one, after I did the first derivative, I really have a couple of different choices uh, as to where I could start taking the second derivative. I'm actually going to start, um, let's see here, I'm going to go from this line, and here's the reason why. Uh, because if I went to the line before that, um, I'm going to end up with like, 2y primes, it's easier with the factor form because I'm going to have to do the product rule one way or another. Um, I think it's just going to be easier from this point. But you should be able to get to the same conclusion whichever line you use, whether you use this line, this line, or the third line. You should get to the same place, but I think this one may be a little bit easier and I may need a little bit more room than that. Okay, so um, I'm going to have to use the product rule. Okay, so first is y prime times the derivative of the second. The derivative of 1 minus x is simply negative 1. Plus, uh, the derivative of the first, the derivative of the first derivative is the second derivative, times the second. Okay, so that's the left side. The derivative of the right side, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of y is y prime. All right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. It's just the derivative of the derivative is the second derivative. All right. So let's see here. Uh, this is a negative y prime, so let me add it to the other side. So I've got y double prime times 1 minus x is equal to 2y prime. Okay, now before I completely solve for y double prime, I'm going to plug in my dy over dx from that previous step. Uh, so I'm going to leave the left side alone for the moment. On the right side, for y prime, I'm going to plug in dy over dx. 1 plus y over 1 minus x. Okay, uh, then I'm going to isolate y prime by multiplying by 1 over 1 minus x. So make it go away over there. So on the right side, when we clean this up, we have d squared y over dx squared, the second derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to 2 times 1 plus y. Okay, I'm just multiplying straight across the top over 1 minus x times 1 minus x, that's 1 minus x squared. Let's look back at our original function, 1 minus x squared. 1 minus x y is equal to x minus y. Okay, let's see if there's anything that we can do to substitute here. Um, now, the way that it's written, no. But let's see what happens if I kind of rearrange things. I see that 1 plus y in the top. Uh, so if I manipulate this by adding the y and adding the xy just to rearrange things, we have 1 plus y is equal to x plus xy. And move the minus y to the other side and move the minus xy to the right side. So I can substitute. The, the goal is really you want to get rid of as many y's as you can. Uh, sometimes you can't get rid of all of them, um, but you can get rid of some of them. And in fact, uh, I remember why I did this problem. What else can I do to that expression in blue over there? We can factor out an x, and look what happens. 